Hello, my name is Andrew, and I'm going to read you a story called The Toys Christmas Adventure. It was three o'clock in the afternoon on Christmas Eve, and it had been snowing for an hour, which made the gathering darkness look magical. The toys were sitting by the Christmas tree, watching the sparkly Christmas tree lights. There was Eric the elephant, Teddy, Polly the polar bear, Scamp the dog, and the doll Princess Rosie. The toys were owned by George, who was six, and Erin May, who was four. The toys were magical. They came to life and had all kinds of adventures. Everyone had their name on a stocking, so that Father Christmas would know which one was which. Eventually everyone had gone to bed, and then all became quiet. Let's play some games, suggested Princess Rosie. That's a brilliant idea, said Eric. But before they could play a game, they heard a noise coming from the chimney. What was that? said Teddy. Just then, a rather fat man with a white beard stepped out of the fireplace, holding a large sack, which was very full. Merry Christmas, said Father Christmas, for that was who he was. Who are you? asked Polly. I'm Father Christmas. Are you what Christmas is all about then? asked Princess Rosie. Father Christmas laughed and shook his head. Oh dear me, no. Christmas is not really about me. It's about the one whose birthday it is. And not just anyone's birthday. It's Jesus' birthday. Jesus? asked Eric. Jesus is the king who wasn't born in a palace, but in a stable. He is still king, even though he was born a long time ago. He must be very old, said Teddy. Yes, he is. Older than the world itself, yet not old. How can he be old and yet not old? asked Eric. That's the mystery of it. It's his birthday and I come to help people celebrate. Can we celebrate too? asked Polly. Yes, everyone is invited to celebrate Jesus' birthday, replied Father Christmas. The toys were all talking at once. Can we meet Jesus too? How do we find him? Where's the stable? Is it far? Oh, laughed Father Christmas. One at a time. You can all meet him. You can find him in all sorts of places and sometimes where you don't expect him. If you want to find out all about it, why not go on a journey to find Jesus? He looked at all the toys, but I can't stand here talking all night. There are lots of presents to leave and I can't disappoint anyone. In a blur of movement, all the stockings were filled. The toys were amazed. That was quick, exclaimed the princess. There are many who are looking forward to my visit tonight, so I have to be fast said Father Christmas. After Father Christmas had gone, the toys were ready for their adventure. We can start looking for Jesus now, declared Eric. But where are we going and how do we get there? asked Polly. Ah, said the toys. I don't know, said Eric. Why don't we look in the maternity ward in the Birmingham Women's Hospital, said Princess Rosie. We might find Jesus there. Yes, but he doesn't live there now, said Scamp. Have you got a better suggestion? snapped the princess. Scamp immediately hung his head. That wasn't very kind. He was trying his best, said Polly. It was Rosie's turn to look sheepish. I'm sorry, Scamp. Eric said, OK, everyone, this is a real adventure. Our mission is to find Jesus, whose birthday everyone is celebrating. Let's go. The moonlight reflected off the snow-covered ground and made everything easy to see. The trees were dusted in snow and there were icicles glistening like diamonds hanging from the trees. When they reached the Birmingham Women's Hospital, the toys asked at reception where the maternity ward is. The kind lady, Katie, showed them how to get there and the toys thanked her very much. 
But as they reached the ward, the midwives, Lizzie, Leah and Wendy, stood in their way looking very stern. What are you doing here? they asked. We're looking to find Jesus. Can you help us find him? said Polly. Well, he isn't here, they said. He was born a long time ago and a long way from here. All the toys were very, very sad when they heard that Jesus wasn't born at the Birmingham Women's Hospital. The midwives said, the best place to look for him will be at the Birmingham Children's Hospital. There you will find the story of the very first Christmas. You'll know you've reached the place because you will hear music. So we have to keep our ears open, said Eric, who was rather proud of his large ears. And your eyes too, they replied. The toys left the maternity ward disappointed that they had not found Jesus. So what do we do now? asked Polly. I think we ought to go back home to a nice, warm, comfortable bed, said Teddy with a sigh. Teddy liked his comforts. We can't turn back, not after coming this far, said Eric. We have to go to the Birmingham Children's Hospital and find this story. With music, said Scamp. Let's go, shouted Princess Rosie. Outside the women's hospital, the toys looked at each other, uncertain which way to go. It was Scamp who came to their help. It's this way. Don't worry, I know the way. So the toys went through empty and silent streets to the Birmingham Children's Hospital. Ahead of them was a large building. We've made it, exclaimed Eric. It was Teddy who was the first to move. Although he was frightened, he thought that the sooner they found what they were looking for, the sooner they would go back home to be by the fire. Teddy led the toys to the main entrance. And as they came to the doors, they found the stable and some beautiful singing. The toys were amazed. Eric kept saying to himself, oh my. Princess Rosie had a big smile on her face. Teddy had overcome his fear and was filled with happiness. Polly thought she hadn't seen anything so beautiful. And Scamp felt very peaceful. We can't stay here, whispered Princess Rosie. And the toys hurried to find shelter in a dark corner. Please don't eat me, squeaked a tiny voice. They looked around and eventually they saw a toy sheep sitting there. It's okay, we're friends, said Polly. We are here to find Jesus. She introduced herself and the others. And then she asked, what's your name? My name is Molly and I'm a sheep that fell out of the stable. Is this Jesus the King we've been told about? asked Eric. Yes, people celebrate his birth and worship him, said Molly. But because of COVID, people come in small groups to hear the Christmas songs, which are called carols. Are we allowed to come close? said Princess Rosie. Yes, but you will see that everyone who comes in remains socially distanced to try and avoid spreading COVID. But you're in a family bubble, so you're all right, said Molly. Molly led the friends to the front of the stable. As she did so, the choir began singing. The toys stopped and listened. Oh.
front of them was a stable. Not a large stable with real animals in, but a small stable with figures in them. Animals, Mary and Joseph and shepherds. And there, right in the middle, was a model of a baby, Jesus the King. We all enjoy celebrating the birth of Jesus, who was born in a stable many years ago, said Molly. He did so because he loves us and wanted to show us what God is like. The toys gathered round the stable, pleased that they had reached their goal, filled with wonder and pleasure. So how did Jesus show us what God is like, asked Teddy who looked a little confused. And how do we know he succeeded? Good question, said Molly. Although Jesus was born in a stable, he grew up, died for us and rose again and went back to his Father in heaven. He promised always to be with us and calls us to follow him. You know how humans can be cruel and selfish sometimes. The toys nodded. Well, what I've heard is here that Jesus' plan was to undo all the bad things humans do and show them the best way to live. How did he do that? asked Teddy. He did it by always being kind and treating everyone as important. He is the king of the whole world and he was born in a stable to show that he had come to live as an ordinary human being and to serve others. He really understands us. He won the battle against selfishness and greed. I'm not sure how we can follow him. After all, we can't see him, said Teddy. Molly said, we follow him by being kind to each other and by loving him. The toys thanked Molly and promised that they would always be friends. They said goodbye and walked back down the deserted, snow-covered streets until they reached their home. The back door was still slightly open, just as they had left it. They went in, remembering to lock the door so no one would know that anything had happened. In the lounge, Teddy was pleased that the fire was still alight. So, they settled down in front of the Christmas tree and one by one, nodded off to sleep, pleased with their adventure and that they had found Jesus, whose birthday they would remember and celebrate too.